I'm Michael McQueen. And what do you do? I am. Uh, I do research. I intern for Gaia Media. Okay, fantastic. And you? I'm Jamie Song. I did the graphic design on all the posters, and I created the mascots that go on all the advertisements. Okay. And you, sir? Yes, my name is Yohei Suzuki. I, I'm, a, I'm a member of the PJ Pop and organizing committee for PJ Pop. And you, sir? And Ricardo that's also a member of the PJ Pop. Thank you all for being here. So, first event, first time maiden voyage. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm extremely excited. I mean, this is Pioneer. It's the first day. Mm -hmm. I was pumped coming here this morning. Mm -hmm. um, seeing all the fans, seeing their energy, just really gets you pumped up. That's okay. Um, there are so many anime-related events that are popping up left and right in New York City lately. So let me ask you this, besides being the geographic location of Harlem, what also made PJ Mini Pop special to you as compared to other uh, anime related events that are popping up in New York City? Uh, well, one thing about PJ Pop in general that we want to, um, we, we want to make sure that it's more, has authenticity uh, stamped on it. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the cons, you know, you go there and they're just basically a vendor fest. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to make sure that there's some um, real culture there. Um, we want to have, we want to bring in some more authentic foods. Um, we had the, uh, the the cafe, which is a unique feature. So you know, we want to make sure that we have something that's uh, true to the fans and not just for the venues. Okay, my other question to you is: uh, in choosing the Dwyer Center in Harlem, how are the local Harlem residents? Uh, taking this event, I mean, what is what is have you, when you advertise yourself? Hi, we're an anime event. We're going to be at the Dwyer Center in Harlem. What are some of the locals' reactions to the event? Uh, well, the, the, their first reaction, to be honest with you, the, the, their first reaction is, "What anime? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <clears throat> Super Mario, Dragon Ball? <laughs> you know?" Because uh, I mean, they most most local children watch cartoons, shows, but. Uh, you know, they don't necessarily know what anime is. Mm -hmm. So, and they, they don't necessarily know what the Japanese culture is. So, for us, we wanted to take advantage of this situation by introducing the uh, authentic Japanese pop culture to the local families and local students and kids. And, the, uh, and plus, it can be a cross-cultural project for us to uh, you know, bring in a lot of Japanese cultures uh, which are new to us, uh, new to them. And uh, the plus, uh, you know, most most people are African Americans and Latino and you know, that so-called minority people. So, yeah, we would like to create a culture of positive spins for for American society. And is there a particular reason why uh, the Japanese culture groups has a particular interest in Harlem? Is there a particular reason why, uh, besides all the other neighborhoods in Manhattan? You mean as far as PJ Pop or in, in general? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, I mean, one, one thing I could say is, uh, uh, in the historically speaking, you know, most people in Japan, or not necessarily in Japan, but most people in America, or most people in New York, have been, have sort of been ignoring or avoiding the uh, Harlem communities, you know, because of the stigma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they come up with the ideas like, you know, violence, drug abuse, or sex, or you know, gangsters. So we wanted to try to change the uh, so those negative images by introducing uh, you know the new people, kind of outsiders, to local communities in Harlem. So that that's how we uh, started to do a PJ Pop as a first project in the in the Harlem area. Yeah, because uh, we can integrate the people of different communities, of different races, of different ethnicities and we can respect each other and love of different cultures. So uh, that, that is why uh, our PJ Pop event is meaningful to us because, uh, yeah, uh, we, we, can, we, can, we can have the people understand yeah, what the Japanese culture is. Yeah, it's not just an anime, it's not just a sushi, it's not just a Super Mario, uh, it's not just a sumo wrestling. Yeah, by watching the anime, yeah, you can be educated. You, you, can, you, can have a, you can have a sense of love, you can have a sense of community, and you can learn the sense of uh, like uh, uh, friendship and the family, and, and the love and respect. So you, you can learn a lot of numerous things.
And also, um, what are some of the difficulties that, or roadblocks that you came across as you started this project uh, for this event today? Can you talk about any like, difficulties that come to mind? Uh, what well, was <laughs> well, okay. kind of a project like this in, in the economy that we're in? <laughs> it's, I mean, that's that's enough of a roadblock right there. You know? But um, you know, there's well, there's a way, and uh, the fans have you know, spoken, and um, you know, the, the fandom is still there. They want to see these things uh, take place, and, and they do. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, as someone who has grown up in New York, and I could duly attest to this, I'm an old school anime fan. Uh, back in the day, the only way for people in my generation to get anime was to go down to Chinatown, go to the Elizabeth Street Mall, and go to the vendors that sell crappy videotapes of fan subs. That's the only way we can get anime. This was before the advent of internet. This was before before Toonami. That was the only way we could get anime. And as a and it, um, which was uh, amusing to me at that time, there'll be a long line of kids lined up outside, you know, getting their weekly dosage of uh, their addiction. But besides the Chinese kids and local Asian kids lining up, from my perspective, I've seen a lot of Latino and African American kids also queuing up in a line with us. But then you could always have that one lone white kid show up buying the videotapes as well. You know, is that but I don't know why is it that the Latino and the African American community identify with anime so much as, as along with Asians. That's always fascinating to me. Well, that, that just that goes to show that um, anime uh, has a global impact. And uh, African American and Asian communities um, see a lot of similarities in culture. You know, um, through the, the character interactions, the relationships, the things they go through, uh, the way some of the scenes are done, um, when they see a good scene or good artwork, it just resonates and it doesn't matter what culture it comes from, they're going to see the core essence of what the artist was trying to um, put out. Okay. And plus, the, uh, the, uh, as far as the cultural aspect goes, I, I, I see a lot of similarities between the African American communities and Japanese communities. Uh, for example, yeah, if you go to Atlanta, Georgia, you come across a bunch of black kids at school. Uh, they, they, they call the other parents or you know, the, the, the teachers, Mr. and Mrs. or the, you know, sirs and ma'am and stuff like that. They never call the, the, the teachers and the first names. And also, uh, they, they, respect, they show a lot of respect to their ancestors. They eat the cornbread, black eyed peas, go to churches, uh, you know, celebrate all the African traditions on the stuff. So, and also Japanese people, you know, shows a lot of res respect to their ancestors. So they go to temples and share it to, uh, to, uh, to, to say Happy New Year's to their ancestors, or, or they eat a lot of traditional food. Uh, also, uh, they have a lot of sense of communities and love. You know, respect parents and brothers. So I, feel, I see a lot of similarities between African American and Japanese cultures. So that's, I believe that's how, um, you know, so Japanese anime have been absorbed into a different racial, racial communities.